Is there any overlap between space exploration and your cancer imaging research at Stanford? Uh, well, yeah, but before I answer that, I wanna, I wanna give a, one shout out and that is for the kids. Um, one thing that was really interesting as we got those pictures that you see in front of you um, came down, what we were really excited about is how involved kids got and they would set up their, this was done in Purim here, you can see the picture, one of the pictures from Purim. You can see kids were dressed up as astronauts operating their own rocket ships and uh, I, I never learned what happened to this mission that you see here. But it was really exciting to see how kids got involved in this and this is one of the things that I'm really proud of. We have a really dedicated team of hundreds of volunteers that went school to school and got to touch those kids and to teach them about what science and engineering means to them. And this volunteering team has actually uh, reached over a million kids by now. So they are an amazing people uh, with doing amazing work. As far as uh, cancer uh, versus space, so uh, I think there is only one obvious connection between the two. And that is that you wear this white coat, both when you work on a spaceship and also when you're uh, working in the lab, it's the same coat. But um, more deeply in than that, I think that uh, one of the things that enabled us to build such a um, small and, and cost efficient mission that got to the moon was advancements that happened over the last decade in technology. So when we started our mission, you know, 3D printing was not a, something that was common, uh, not, not to say ride sharing of missions like our own to the moon. And, but over the, over the last decade, these technology became more and more dominant and we were able to utilize them for the first time to reach the surface of the moon. So I think we owe a great um, uh, thank you to the advancement of technology and a lot of it came out of Israel and uh, this is what have made this possibility. Now the same thing happens in the medical field. You can see technologies that were not as common that was only at the, at the fingertips of people that were uh, dedicated workers in IBM and Intel and so on and so forth. And all of a sudden this technology flows in a way that also students like myself can actually access them and do the same uh, operations with this new technology. And because of this radical shift in technology, we're able to create this imaging device that I've been working on. And I'll, I'll share with you a few words about what is that imaging device. So uh, what we're working on is basically imaging cancer. And um, if you go to the doctor and there's some suspicion for a lesion that uh, the doctor wants to take, to take a look at, right now there is only one option, and that is to take it out and examine it under a microscope. Now it's obviously painful, you get a scar, but you also, you cannot biopsy everywhere. You need to choose where you wanna biopsy and you need to have some sort of indication why biopsy here, not here, you cannot biopsy everywhere. And one of the things that we want to do is to replace that uh, a procedure which is invasive with something that is not invasive. This is a laser-based technology. You can see it uh, here on the left. This is a handheld device that uses laser and advancements, recent investment in laser technology to image the same skin. And we can use machine learning, again, another technology that did not exist a decade ago, to convert those images that the laser takes into what doctors can look at, as if they were cutting the tissue, but without the cutting itself. And I think that's one of the amazing uh, stuff that is only possible because of the, advanced, the fast advancement in technology. 